Hey, what is up guys? This is Nishi back with another Market Watch episode. Today we are looking at a ton of different cards that are fluctuating in price for a variety of reasons. A lot of these we have covered in the past, but as we get closer to the release of Burst of Destiny and the Tins, we're starting to see some in-demand cards inch higher and higher as we get closer to their release dates. Because we've already looked at a number of these cards in the past, I'm not going to go into a crazy amount of detail with each one as usual, but hopefully you guys will still find today informative as you guys prepare for the many sets that we have coming out later this year. Let's get started. So to start things off, we have Token Collector. This is of course a very in-demand side deck card in the OCG because of how strong it is against the Sword Soul deck, locking both players out of tokens while it's on the field, which is obviously devastating against a deck where all of the main deck monsters focus on generating token tuners for synchro plays. Not only is this card a hand trap floodgate, but you can even special summon it out from the graveyard so it can be really annoying to deal with. We're currently seeing the Ultras up at $9 to $10 a piece, which is where they've been for a while as people have been anticipating this card's increase in usage in the future, but we're actually now seeing even the common and rare versions of the card up at $2 a piece, which is a lot considering that they were only quarters before. If you guys opened a ton of Soul Fusion or the 2019 Megatons, this is definitely a card that you should be salvaging out of your bulk, because people will definitely be looking for multiples of this card in just a couple of months. Next up, Assault Beast is a card that we talked about last week in the aftermath of Emergency Teleport going to 2 on the October 2021 ban list. It is of course a necessary search target for Psy Reflector, allowing you to basically turn Itali into a free synchro monster without burning your normal summon. When we looked at this card last week, we saw that either version of the card was only a dollar or so. Now, however, we see that the commons from OTS Tournament Pack 10 are $3 each, while the cheapest near mint rare copies available on TCG Player are $10, though in the sold listings I don't think we see any moving for more than $4 a piece. Obviously, we haven't seen any tournament results for under the new ban list yet, though perhaps the buyout of this card means that people are testing it out and finding the package to be really strong, or of course, maybe people are just looking to buy out whatever they can and are hoping for the best. Fortunately, this card is just a one of if you're playing the package, so I think it is reasonable to pick up a common copy for a couple of dollars if you're planning on using the package in the future, but I wouldn't be trying to invest in too many additional copies other than that. Alright, so this is a much more obscure one that we haven't talked about before. All copies of Zombie World are actually starting to trend upwards. Now this is a potentially really useful side deck card after Burst of Destiny comes out, as it prevents the Flow Wonder Rees from tribute summoning, since obviously they aren't zombie monsters. It's certainly a cool tech, and it's a field spell, so theoretically you could search it with like terraforming or metaverse if you needed to. However, I think it is a little bit too limited in its applications, unless you're playing zombies, right? As it's only really useful against the one strategy. Anyways, the Duelist League colored rare copies are pretty expensive, up at $15 to $20 each depending on the color, and as usual there is fairly few quantities of them available on the market as well. The card also has two ultra rare versions, which are $3 to $4 each, and then surprisingly even all of the common copies are worth a dollar or two now. Definitely a card that is worth setting a playset of to the side, as this is a card that has a history of trending back upwards in price as its reprints get older and older, with how popular of a deck zombies are. However, I would definitely be looking to drop any Duelist League copies that you have if you can find someone who's willing to pay up for them. So on a very similar note, Mask of Restrict is a card that was a bit more expensive than I was expecting. It's very similar to Zombie World in that functionally it prevents tribute summoning, however obviously it's a continuous trap rather than a field spell, and it prevents all tributing though it doesn't turn everything into zombies. For the purposes of reviewing its role within the meta though, it's also something that's just being used to stop the flow wanderies, as they can't really do anything too scary if they can't tribute summon their boss monsters or Mega Ryza, however it's still vulnerable to cards like Cosmic Cyclone or Lightning Storm, and is really only good in the one specific matchup. Now the card has two holo printings out, the Ultra Rares from Labyrinth of Nightmare, where you're looking at around $15 for an unlimited copy, or the Super Rares from OTS Tournament Pack 2, which are about $5 each. I remember being able to pick those supers up for only a dollar when they came out, so I was pretty surprised to see them as high as they are. Now for those of you who are okay with non-holo versions, the card does also have four common printings available, which are only about 50 cents each right now, so if you're wanting to look at citing this card in the future, now might be the time to pick up those budget-friendly versions. 
Alright, so it's weird to be talking about this archetype in 2021, but Cosmo Farm Girl is actually trending up in price as well. Obviously, Itelli going to 2 was a pretty significant change, and Cosmos were one of the big reasons that the card got hit in the first place. Farm Girl is one of the best targets that you can special summon with Itelli, as you can use it to push for huge damage if you can clear your opponent's board. Personally, I don't think Cosmos are going to be doing anything too crazy, though it's possible that if Emergency Teleport goes to 3, maybe they'll do something cool sometime within the next year. Anyways, Farm Girl is one of the deck's more important cards and only has two printings, the original Ultra Rare from Clash of Rebellion which is $7 and then the pretty ugly Gold Rares which are $5 each. That's astonishing to me because I remember how much people disliked the Gold Rare Cosmo cards compared to the originals. Now if I were you guys and I wanted to play Cosmo, I would be looking to pay the extra $6 and just get myself a set of Ultra Rares rather than having to deal with those ugly Gold Rares but that's just me. Then again, with how popular Cosmos are with the fanbase due to their Star Wars themed tie-in, maybe Konami will reprint some more cards from the archetype to help sell some sort of future reprint set. The next card we have here is Ruddy Rose Dragon, a level 10 generic synchro monster that we did take a look at a little while ago. When we reviewed this card before, we saw that it was only about $12, I think. Well, now the card has shot up way past that, all the way to the $20 mark. Now, when this card is special summoned, you can banish all cards from both players' graveyards. This is especially useful in Sword Soul, as you can use it to banish your opponent's token collectors from their graveyard and prevent them from using it as a floodgate against you, as well as potentially hurting certain other strategies such as the Eldritch. The card is just a one of in the extra deck and is probably only going to see play in the Sword Soul strategy, though we don't yet know just how important the card will be or if it will be maybe outclassed by another tech option. However, the card is fairly new just coming out in Lightning Overdrive, so we shouldn't expect to see it reprinted until the 2022 Megatons at the earliest. If you're planning on playing Sword Soul, I would just go ahead and pick up a copy for yourself to use now, since its price is still relatively reasonable. Okay, so this is kind of an interesting one. We will give a shout out here to Sucka Corn Nut, the original, who mentioned this card in the comment section of the last Market Watch. Anyways, Utopic Draco Future was one of the most hyped up cards from King's Court, but hasn't really seen play in any meta strategies. While it was $20 for a while, we saw it slowly drop down to around $15 and then just kind of float there as a card that has a lot of potential, but was never used in any meta relevant strategies here. However, it does look like the card has shot back up to $20 almost out of nowhere as I don't see any huge clear catalysts that would be responsible for driving this card's price up. As best as I can tell, I believe the card is currently seeing play in Phantom Knights over in the OCG, which are able to use the Brave Token engine quite well and have established themselves as one of the better decks over there. Aside from that, I don't really see any other sort of explanation. So if you guys do know why this card is moving back up, make sure that you let everyone know in the comment section down below. As for whether or not you should pick this card up, I do still think that at $20 it is fairly reasonably priced. We've seen other cards from side sets shoot up way higher in price and the card just has so much potential. I would make sure that you own at least one copy just in case it starts to see meta play. So while we're mentioning Phantom Knights, I do also want to take a second to have you guys take a look at Cherubini, Ebon Angel of the Burning Abyss. Now this is a Link 2 monster for the Burning Abyss archetype originally that lets you dump a level 3 monster from your deck to the graveyard. It's also something that's used by Phantom Knights in the OCG as well. Now this card is actually something that I think is pretty underutilized and underpriced at the moment as it isn't being used in any meta decks here in the TCG, but I believe it has a lot of potential nevertheless. At the moment, you can pick up ultra rare reprints of this card from the Megatons for only two to three dollars, and the original print secret rares are only 10, which feels really affordable for something with such a simple yet potentially powerful effect. It's also worth keeping in mind that Burning Abyss is an extremely popular archetype with a lot of the player base, and honestly, it wouldn't surprise me to see some sort of new Burning Abyss or Phantom Knight support released at some point in the future. I'm not saying that this is a card to go buy out right this second, but I do think that if you're looking for a card that's just going under the radar that no one's paying attention to right now, Cherubini is definitely a card that you will want to keep an eye on. Next, we're looking at the forgotten promo from the 2019 Megatons. It is Dimension Shifter. So this is a floodgate hand trap that banishes any cards going to the graveyard, but you can only activate it if there are no cards in your graveyard. Obviously extremely powerful, but it's quite a restrictive condition attached to the card. So for a long time, this card didn't see any sort of consistent meta usage. Now, however, with the Flowanderies deck coming out in Burst of Destiny, 
That's a strategy that would actually benefit from running Dimension Shifter while still having it be an effective counter to a considerable amount of the meta as Shadal's Tri Brigades and Drytron all want their cards going to the graveyard, with Nibiru and Dark Ruler No More each being reprinted already. This is kind of like the forgotten about one that hasn't seen enough play to need a reprint yet, though we are starting to see it trend upwards in price as people expect it to see more play. The card is currently $5 a piece on TCG Player at the moment. Whether or not this card goes up in price definitely depends on just how good the Flow Wanderees deck is, since the deck doesn't seem to be doing anything too crazy over in the OCG, but obviously the OCG and TCG are extremely different. I could see this card going up a few dollars, though I think it's unlikely to hit double digits, though we do also want to keep in mind that between Maximum Gold Eldorado and Brothers of Legend, this card could see a reprint within the next couple of months. So this is something that honestly I don't really want to look at right now, but I feel like I get drawn back to this card every few months. Dimensional Barrier used to be one of the best, most expensive cards in the game, shutting down all of a certain type of extra deck monster from being summoned or from using their effects for a turn. When Link monsters were introduced to the game, the card did fall off for quite a while and wasn't as popular, but ever since the master rule changed and didn't restrict fusions, synchros, and Ixies to only being allowed to be summoned to Link monster zones, the card has popped up every now and then as being a potentially really strong side deck card. In theory, this is true again, as we will be able to call Synchro against Sword Souls and then Fusions against Despia, Shadals, and Invoked, but I don't know if this is necessarily enough to make me want to buy up this card. It's something that gets talked up quite often, but I never actually see it used much, even when it would in theory be good, so I find it a card that's difficult to get excited about. Anyways, it saw another small wave of hype recently, which resulted in the original first editions from Invasion Vengeance bought out to the $15 mark, though you can still grab original Unlimiteds for 5s and the Megatin reprint secret rares for 3s, so maybe it's not worth freaking out about quite yet. The card does also have a couple of common printings from Structure Decks and an easily accessible ultra rare version from Dual Devastator though, so if you don't already have a set of this card, make sure you go and pick up a few of the cheap ones that are still under 50 cents a copy. Alright, the final card I want to take a look at here today is Vision Hero Ferris, a card that has hit a pretty ridiculous $50 a single copy. This is an important card for hero decks, as something that pulls Vision Hero increase from out of your deck, which then summons out Vion. Heroes aren't exactly the best deck of the format right now, but I think you could argue that at any given time, they are the most popular deck with players, as there are a ton of casual players that want to play and or collect all of the hero cards. I believe that the deck did see a top a couple of weeks ago under the old ban list, and with Destroy Phoenix Enforcer coming out in Burst of Destiny, we've probably seen another huge surge of people interested in picking up and playing heroes yet again. Ferris being a key card for this strategy is big, because it only has the one secret rare printing from Battles of Legend Heroes Revenge, yet it is a 3 of, right? And the card was actually quite difficult to pull from that set as well. Keep in mind that Battles of Legend Heroes Revenge came out way back in 2019, more than a full two years ago at this point. I would assume that Ferris and Increase are going to be reprinted in Maximum Gold or Brothers of Legend, as the cards desperately need to be reprinted and they would make great selling points for those sets. Even if you're building heroes, I would stay away from picking up Ferris at this crazy price point and just wait for the card's inevitable reprint. Alright everyone, that is it for today's episode. We did cover a lot of different cards today, but there were a ton of different things that I noticed going on with the market that I wanted to cover. I'm sure that after the Megatins and Burst of Destiny drop, we're going to get a ton more leaks from other reprint sets that we have coming up later this year, and we're going to see a ton of crazy price shifts all over the market yet again. Anyways, if you guys did enjoy today's Market Watch episode, please do let me know by hitting that thumbs up button for me. Also, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys think about the cards we talked about today, and also let me know about what other cards are trending on the market so I can cover them in future episodes. Also, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button to get all of the latest and greatest content from both Tombox and myself. And until next time, guys, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV.